just because something should be happening, well, that doesn't mean it will happen. Consider the case of Paychex, P-A-Y-X, the second largest payroll processor in America with a side business and outsourced human resources. Paychex should be blowing their numbers in this farm. I mean, they should be just killing it. But uh, they're doing fine, not great at least according to the analysts, who never seem satisfied with this winning stock. As a payroll processor, Paychex makes more money when employment is strong, and the current employment situation is insanely good. At the same time, when clients hand over their payroll money to Paychex, they collect interest on it for a short period of time, which means the company gets more profitable as the Fed raises rates. Yet its stock is basically flat for the year. Paychex just reported last week, and while the company delivered a revenue beat, its earnings were only in line. Guidance was robust, but not enough to prevent the stock from selling off before bouncing right back. So what's going on here? Let's take a closer look with Marty Moose. Marty is the president and CEO of Paychex to get a better sense of how it's doing. Where's that, Mr. Bucci? Welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. Good to be here. Okay, Marty. Uh, we just got to get right at this. Um, I was surprised. There was this little bit of guidance decline from three percent to two to three percent. Everything else was fabulous. It just that the analysts then keyed on that. What are we supposed to do here, Marty? Well, look, Jim, I think we had a solid year. We certainly ended up very strong in the in the fourth quarter. We've got great momentum from a sales perspective. That's what we said going into our new fiscal year here this month. So we ended up with a solid 7% revenue growth on the top line and great earnings per share growth, double-digit growth. So I, I'm not sure. You know, we just continue to produce good results, and let's see, see what happens. I mean, to me, the, the situation that tells me why things are good is the change you made in the dividend. I thought that that was incredibly important that you did it ahead of time. We did. We did it a quarter ahead of time than we normally do, and 12% increase in the dividend, which is higher than we normally have it. You know, we're paying out 80% of our net income in dividends and continue to do so. Now, you also are spending. And to a lot of people on Wall Street, spending is a curse. Yeah. To me, when I see paycheck spending, what that says to me is you are setting up for 2019 being a very big year because of both employment and job creation. That's exactly right. You know, when we, when we got the benefit from tax reform, because we're a very profitable business, we gave a lot back to shareholders, the large proportion. But we also took some of that and are accelerating our product development investment to make sure that we have the best products out there for our clients and are jumping ahead of our competition. Now, you, you particularly called out some a very interesting thing. I didn't really understand this. Uh, well, I, I, I think I do, but I don't want to. You talked about the idea of outsourcing HR, that people are worried about harassment, that they don't know how to deal with harassment. Can you explain that more? Because to me, that strikes home as something that people can't do internally because they don't know how to handle it. Well, that's very true. What we're seeing is this is the very high topic of concern for small businesses in particular who don't have that full HR support. And our service, HR outsourcing and our PEO business, provide that HR support. And one of the biggest issues they're worried about these days is because of the risk, how do they handle uh, harassment? How, what kind of policy should they have in place? And, and how do they deal with it when somebody does complain? So we're really hearing this a lot. And, you know, we have over 500 HR specialists around the country helping our clients. We're serving over a million worksite employees across the country. So that's the top topic of concern right now. I, it's incredible, but I think it's, well, it's part of society and people don't know how to handle it. Let's talk in general about the economy. Uh, to me, you always give us a pretty good read on what areas are doing well, what areas uh, uh, are you seeing new businesses, and who's doing uh, what areas are they doing the hiring and what kinds of companies? Well, we're seeing the South, from a region perspective, the South still having the best job growth, even though it's down a little bit from last year. The South is still the strongest, and it's, you know, construction and uh, other services. Those are still strong in the South. And I think construction is still recovering from the hurricanes from last fall. You know, roof repairs, landscaping, things like that. The West is having the highest wage increase, but they have the most minimum wage increases. But they're having the slowest growth uh, from year over year. And then from a sector perspective, uh, we're seeing actually manufacturing up from a low point. And other services and leisure and hospitality are still the top job givers, but they are down from last year. Overall, we saw a slight downtick in job growth and a slight downtick in wage growth under 2.5% annual wage increase, 
which was surprising to us. Well, how can that be? I mean, for instance, you have to be thinking it with employment as, as tight as it is. I know you talk about that with recruiting that you guys are doing, which is another great service that you provide. Yeah. But employment as tight as it is, uh, it, people should be emboldened to start new businesses. They see business great. That's not happening? Is it just uh, there are other, th other forces at work? Well, you're right. The optimism, the NFIB index, the optimism is very high. But I think when it comes to wage increases and what we found from our clients and further uh, surveying was that 65 percent said they weren't making enough profit to raise wages. So they're trying to do other things. They're making other investments. Uh, they're hiring part time or contingent workforce to try to fill in. I think there's still this concern about if I increase wages, will I be able to roll that back? Instead, can I somehow make sure that I'm going to have solid sales and growing profits in the future? Wow. Well, I got to tell you, it's going to happen sooner or later because I know that you wouldn't be hired if we didn't see it happening. And you've really done a remarkable job once again. The analysts better get on board. It's you and me. We caught a double <laughs> so far. Thank you so much, Marty Musi, the president Thanks, and Jim. CEO of Paychex. Look, 3% yield, great growth. Just buy it. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.